and I think I think one of the things. Um, forgive me, I've forgotten. I think it's Alexandra was saying about just getting engaged in uh, in the ability to influence where the campaign went. I, I think that 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 happens when the GM is paying attention, not just that your roles affect the system, but that the GM accepts what you're up to and works with it instead of blocking you or uh, taking it his way. That's what I really wanted to ask you about, Alexander, was exactly it. Remember I said I was writing down yeah. questions. This is the one that I was writing down, which is that in certain social circumstances, what you described, mm -hmm. at least with some game masters that I have known, and maybe decades ago, game masters that I might have been, um, I would have perceived a player doing that, or they would today perceive a player doing that as a griefer, as ruining things, uh, as troublemaking. And if your if if your group and game master approached or responded to you in a different way than yeah. that, I want to know about that. Tell me more about. Oh, and also, how did the character get made? Um, yeah. Okay, so so uh, how the character get made uh, was okay. So I was going to play D and D, uh, which I'm not that good still. Um, so the character has to be the, made mechanically, and mechanically there isn't that many options for um, for making the personality of the character or, or things like that. But in fact, you have those backgrounds and things. Right? Yes, there is there is background, and there are professions. So usually, uh, when I uh, I want to make something cool, I take a background that's kind of collides with the profession. So in this case, the profession was battle master, mm -hmm. uh, a, a kind uh, one one of uh, of the three three options of fighter. Uh, and I decided that it would be a leg legionnaire, but for a uh, for a background I chose. I think it's swindler or like schemer or something I, like right. that. I, I recognized, given your description, I was I was yeah. just working on some fifth edition characters with my kids today. So okay, I've, yeah. So I've been looking at those background rules and what yeah. you were describing. I'm like, I think I know what pages those yeah. just came from. Yes. But so, I have a question for you about this. Mm -hmm which is that in that game you have the option either to choose or to roll. Oh, uh, it was choosing. Choosing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Choosing in the character was making a mage um I know kind of tactically mm -hmm. like it it has to be a uh, competent in in combat or like in in different kind of situations. Uh, we knew what what was the initial situation that uh someone Wealthy will give us uh, a quest, and it right, will right. Mm -hmm. it will have something about um, that there was a big uh, festivities where people made uh, offering to the gods, mm -hmm. and one of them was a god um, a goddess of um, of fire, like a, a very like aggressive uh, um, fighting, um, taking like take care of things, something like that. Okay, so, so th what interests me is that you took those, you chose things very carefully, mm -hmm. so that not only did it fit into the scenario. I mean, there you are, this bodyguard, you know, all these. Yes. Things fit is i mean it's in at, at first glance it's the most cooperative form of character making yes. you could make right he'll write this yes. is what you told me here's my piece and oh look all the edges match what you told me um right so, so mm -hmm. basically it's not because i'm cooperative oh i've got, it, I got that impression of your next start it's, yes <laughs> it, it, it's a different way it's uh i want to be relevant right like right. i know that um like usually, if someone was killed, I want to be his, uh, I know, sister or right. like a lover. Uh, if it's a relevant uh, person, I right. want to be connected to them. Sure. Yeah, it would be. I think it would be more interesting that making a separate interesting character. 
Um, I, I completely see that. So with that, though, we were talking about a character creation system where you had a lot of freedom. The, 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 the yep. game master just handed you the book and said, make up a, you know, here's what yeah, you know, character. make someone up. So, and, and in that game, unlike the older forms of Dungeons and Dragons, <clears throat> you see, for me, I I know it's 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 been 20 years, so I've finally gotten over it. But before 2000, random character creation, extremely random character creation, was yeah. the way you did Dungeons and Dragons. The idea that you could just pick your characteristics and have, I mean, it, before 2000, I mean, someone would stare at you and say, what kind of yeah. Dungeons and Dragons is that? And so it is um, different now. Right. It's very different now. You can actually sit down and not roll it, not roll a single die hardly or barely any dice at all to make up your character. So, um, and then uh, Helma, the creation of your character is an, is an interesting hybrid as well. Yes, I think you could say that. I mean, if I remember right, that's so long ago, um, we started off by somebody deciding, uh, let's show the newbie what a classical fantasy role-playing game looks like. And the game master came to the table with, I think, you six or you. eight pre-made yeah. characters. Right. Mm -hmm. And I very consciously tried to pick one that seemed to melt into the background. Mm -hmm. uh, little did I know. <laughs> but <laughs> because I figured I can't do much wrong if I'm just kind of... Uh, try not <laughs> to be that. Alexandra knows where the famous last words, right, Alexandra? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Well, um... I, I love like, new players at the table, and they are always like shy and oh, I will make this character that it's not like too uh, are uh, too visible, but it's like yeah, I want to see you. Like come here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the go on though because I, I I did present these, and I I made up from a RuneQuest point of view the characters were extremely minimally made, they were they were fairly it was it was kind of like sketchy RuneQuest, they were just just enough numbers to be playable, nothing else, no characterization at all. I made up the names, and I chose a picture, for each one. And, uh, and again, this very sketchy build for each one. So you kind of got the idea what spells they had or something. And um, they, but I didn't say anything about the characters and RuneQuest, especially early RuneQuest has no character classes. So they all could ride, they could all hide. They, could, they all had basic skills and this or that weapon or very little specialization, not very much at all. And so, um, and that was it was a little confusing to one of the players who was trying hard to slot his character into a Dungeons and Dragons class and realized, you know, that that the sheet wasn't really did the sheet didn't care. Right. But so the point was is that even though these were things that I literally handed out with names on them, I didn't know anything about them. At all. No characterization, not even a little, just the picture. So it's a Rorschach test. What do you see in that picture? Right. So, um, so anyway, what happened though over the course of time? Yeah, well, <laughs> she changed. Um, basically, it didn't really take very long. I think the first four sessions I operated with a list of about three or four emotions um working off them and i think after the fourth session i tried to come up with some background story which uh, yeah, i you, you found uh, really difficult so it was even that is really sketchy and mm -hmm. I think she's the, the only one who never lets on to somebody else what and why she is doing or feeling things. It's uh, It became a part of her, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to keep it there. 
Right. Um, what happened was she's she was pretty good in getting into trouble, and she was she's very outspoken. So there was not much of melting into the background. Whatever I tried, she <laughs> popped out front. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, there's a lot, you know, available. I mean, the, the both the Legendary Lives game and this RuneQuest game are mostly fully recorded and presented at Adept Play. And so it's interesting, you know, you can actually see both of us working our way through, you know, playing a character in that kind of moment where the character's emotions spread out a little bit wider than they did as originally depicted. Um, what I'm seeing from a lot of these, just by looking across and having that question in my mind, you know, making the character up with extraordinarily extraordinary freedom, you know, with just a couple of guiding statements, perhaps, or a very simple uh, description of the kind of adventure we're going to have. Um, either making up the character with extreme freedom or making up the character with a great deal of arbitrary qualities, either because they were fully ran so randomly made or because they were handed to you or a substantial amount of the mechanics were simply handed to you. And um, I actually am going to suggest, based on what we're talking about, that that doesn't really matter. Any of those were functional, Right for the purposes of owning the character and having them take on the role, like Manu is talking about, having them take on an emotional array and then you treat that array as dynamic rather than just thespian, something to just present. You treat it as dynamic. And then in the case of uh, just like what, what Alexander is talking about, where the character looks like something on paper and that's fine, but that's not where you... What the paper is not the character, right? Paper is what you are. It's it's just your raw materials, and then the character takes place. And I think in your case, it's especially important. The character doesn't just take place in here. The character takes place between you and the other people, and their appreciation of what you're doing is part of what makes the character work. Right. I mean, especially with a subversive kind of character like that, you know, so I mean, the, so it's, it's really uh, to me, I'm, I'm kind of saying, you know what, it's not the, the notion of random character creation, the notion of controlled character creation, where you take what you're given, the notion of all this freedom and making up your character and how great it is to have that freedom. All of that is an incredibly trivial variable. Right. I mean, if we relate that to feeling the character emotionally, interacting with what's going on, and then the character's emotions change and how they relate to it changes. And what they do may become, in thespian terms, uncharacteristic, but in creative terms, very organic, very logical. <laughs> 